Hey, thanks for watching. I am Ruben, technologist at Intuitatics. In this video, you will learn how to manage a frame account and see the frame admin interface in action. This modern web interface is used by the IT professional to manage the frame account or multiple frame accounts. Tasks such as installing and onboarding new applications, applying applications and OS updates, creating backups, creating launch pads, configuring session policies, also defining production capacity, auditing, analyze usage, receive user session insights. These are some of the key tasks done via the frame admin interface. All right, let me show you the great interface. This is the frame admin interface. The frame account is already created and actually it's one of my showcase accounts. In this example, the frame account is running on Nutanix 8V and powered by Nvidia Tesla GPUs. The sandbox, this machine here, is the master VM. Some people call it gold master, template VM, base image, we call it sandbox. And this VM does contain your applications. You can install applications manually, use new or existing tools to install applications automatically, or you can use an already existing Windows image. During the application installation process, the frame guest agent, which is installed in the sandbox, will detect new applications are already installed. That's what you can see here. I already installed many applications. And during the installation process, the frame guest agent will detect new applications are available and will ask a question, do you want to onboard the application? If you click yes, the application list will, uh, will be created, as you can see here. When one or more applications are, are onboarded, you can create application launch pads. And that's what you see here. There are two types of launch pads. One type of applications and one type of uh, launchpad called desktop. Desktop means the user will see a full Windows desktop interface when he or she clicks on the icon desktop. And the launchpad applications means that applications are displayed and when the user clicks on the application, only the application itself will be, uh, will be launched. Let's, make, let's create a new launchpad of the type called designer apps. Click add launchpad. I want to use all the apps I already onboarded. I want to group these apps like you can on iOS or Android as well. I want to give it a friendly name, um, call it uh, Adobe Tools, all good. Click Save. And since these apps are designer applications, these apps require a workstation type virtual machine. In my setup, I already defined different instance types. That's done through when the frame uh, environment is set up and configured to AHV in this example. These are the instance types I defined during the installation process, and this Pro 16Q, 2Q profile is what I want to use for these designer apps. It's 16 gigs of RAM, four CPUs, and a 2Q vGPU profile. I don't want to use the other instance types for this launchpad. If I define and create additional launchpads, for instance, sales tools uh, with Excel and Access and uh, other apps attached to that, I Maybe don't want to use this Pro 16 to Q profile, but just an R4 um, instance type, R4 uh, profile. And that can be configured very easily. So you can use different launch pads and attach different instance types to that. And all these launch pads in this frame account will point to the same sandbox, the same master machine. So designer apps launchpad is created. I click here and click on session settings and I want to override the default frame account settings and say, hey, this launchpad, okay, these are designer apps, uh, increase the frame rate and increase the, um, uh, the video bit rate uh, as well. So when there's more bandwidth available, the frame remoting protocol will automatically leverage these, uh, these resources. Next thing is you want to attach users or groups of users configured in the identity system to that launchpad. In my example here, I already configured Google and then uh, two SAML2 based identity providers for this frame account. I want to attach the launchpad I just defined to this demo user. Normally you want to do that on, uh, uh, on group level, not on individual, uh, on personal level, but for this showcase, it's easy to, uh, to do. I just add uh, launchpad user and design apps is the launchpad we just uh, we just created. Click save, which means that if Ruben logs in with these 
um, SAML, uh, SAML user, he will see X. He will access two different launchpads: designer app launchpad and desktop GPU launchpad. Next thing is uh, I want to define capacity. Um, the launchpad will use the Pro 16Q 2Q profile, um, which means I need to set up capacity. And capacity means that the control plane will create capacity, will create clones of the sandbox to support an X amount of users simultaneously. In this example, it's 200. If I click Save, the system will create 200 copies of the master machine when I publish this, the, the sandbox to production. The minimum and buffers are especially important in public cloud because this is how you can control capacity management in public cloud. Maybe in public cloud, as an example, so AWS or Azure or GCP, I want to pre-boot 100 machines at 9 o'clock in the morning so that when colleagues uh, enter the organization, they can instantly launch apps or desktops. In an on-premises environment, uh, this pre-booting of machines is less important because the machine is already there. It's very likely already running. But in public cloud, capacity management and also analytics around capacity management is, uh, is super important. You can set up different um, instance pools with different uh, capacity settings. So for instance, for this sales tools launchpad, if I want to define that, I could say oh, for the Air 4 gig, I want to support 1,000 users. So 1,000 copies of the master machine are created and attached to this VM instance type. 4 gigs of RAM, two CPUs. You can use analytics to analyze the actual usage. Um, for instance, elasticity. Um, for different instance types, as you want to, uh, if you want to do, um, you can use, you can uh, analyze user activity, you can analyze disk usage and the actual usage, uh, and also sessions. Right now, there are no sessions here because just a, a default showcase account. But you can see how many sessions, what the average session time is, what the distance is from uh, endpoint to uh, to VM, things like that. Also, uh, on activity here, you can see the audit trail, you can see a session trail listed here. Um, easy to well, to use that to analyze how the system is being used. Also, this status uh, tab here is also easy to use to see what kind of workload machines are being used, who is using them, um, if there are active sessions or not, um, who is attached and, uh, and is using that VM. And finally, on the settings, I can define if this frame account needs to be classic Active Directory integrated, as you can see here. If I want to use um, frame enterprise profiles. Uh, right now it's not enabled, but if I just enable this one here and click on save, I just enabled frame enterprise profiles. And it means that in this example, a five gig disk, a profile disk will be attached at user logon and will be deattached at when the user logs off. And that disk will contain the complete Windows user profile. This technology is important, especially in a non-persistent, in a pooled environment where the user profile can be large or larger and ha can have impact in the user logon or log, log off prof uh, experience. With the frame enterprise profiles, that experience is great because independent how big the user profile is, it does not impact the logon or log off performance. User profile is stored on a disk. Disk is, is attached when the user logs in and uh, good to go. All right, well, you have seen the frame admin interface in action. Intuitive, modern, simple, powerful, different, yay.